This is my black um, Volvo XC90. Lovely car, really nice inside. Look at all these buttons. It's got uh, buttons for everything. Everything is just beautiful about it. I mean, you turn the key, and it starts. Oops, radio. Bells go, little noises everywhere. It's got seven seats. What else could you want? Oh, I know. I'll show you. This is my black 1950 Chrysler with a silver roof. Right, so now we can have a look and see what uh, buttons we've got in this Chrysler. Certainly not as many as the Volvo. Uh, up here, this is not actually a button. This is the um, the ashtray, very important item in 1950, as people, s well, most people smoked, and certainly they smoked in their cars and in America when they would have long car journeys. So it's a very handy ashtray. There is actually another one um, for the passenger, and that's over here. Very big Ni nice nicely made on this car uh, underneath that we've got the underneath this ashtray here we've got the ignition key very important point to make that it's only the second year that cars had um, that started on the key uh, because it, it, it started in 1949 this is a 1950 this car in 1949 Chrysler brought out their cars where they you started the engine using the key like this um, Prior to that, of course, uh, you turn the ignition on and then use the starter button, something that's uh, uh, really great now. People think it's marvelous on a, on a new car to have a starter button, but of course, in 1950, uh, it was great not to have a starter button. Uh, now, over here, we've got two two buttons. Uh, the, the top one is the light, so we turn it this first position is, are the side lights, and then uh, you go to, to the um, main beam, uh, and the... Um, the main beam and the dipped uh, are changed by the button on the floor. You push a button on the floor to do that, which was common in most cars in those days. Uh, underneath that uh, is another um, light switch, which if you turn to the left, turns lights on in the back of the car, the reading lights. And when you turn it to the position to the right, it actually is um, it adjusts the, the brightness of the of the lights in the dash. So that's quite handy, I guess. On this side, we've got um, the wipers. They're two-speed electric in this car, because it was actually quite a posh car, whereas um, most cars of the period, they were vacuum. This was actually uh, an electric um, wiper mechanism. So first position is slow, if you like, and then fast. Not a lot of difference between them in practice. Uh, down below that is also something that was very important in 1950, and certainly in all the cars. Some cars had them as luxury items, but mainly they all had them. That was a cigarette lighter. In this particular car, there's some in the back as well. Um, over here we've got a built-in radio. You know, there again, I, I guess it's quite impressive. People think that these are all new, but a built-in radio in, in, in 61 years ago. This particular model doesn't work at the moment, um, but um, it, it looks impressive where it sits. Underneath that are the heater and all the heater controls. That's all working. Um, below that is the normal arm that all these cars had that worked the, the vent that let fresh air come in to the car. Very, very inconvenient though, but to be honest with you, a very important item. We have a, a, a built-in clock, which actually works. Um, and as I say, underneath that is the, the other passenger ashtray. And a glove compartment, which, you know, is quite good. Everything on this car works well. Very well built. The dash, of course, is all uh, a metal. 
unlike modern dashes, which are a great big plastic item. This one's unusual as well because Chrysler brought out this this padded padded dash, which is actually quite quite good. Is whether it would actually do anything to help you in an accident, I don't know, but at least um, it looks good and um, it was impressive for the year. This particular car, um, as I've mentioned in some previous videos, was originally designed as a convertible. It's a two-door coupe and the uh, company were not selling enough convertibles, from what I understand, decided to put a metal roof on them and sell them as hardtop coupes, which is why we have this wide band here which is the um, strengthening bar is in there that would have been there for a convertible. There is actually a strengthening bar across the back under the parcel shelf. So though this is a pillarless two-door coupe, um, it's very, very solid, very stable when you wind all the windows down because of the strengthening bars. We've got um, indicators which were built into the car in those days as opposed to some of my cars which they were aftermarket additions so it's got nice i mean the movement and click on this is really good for something that's 61 years old indicators work really well we've got the um lever for the gear change which gives us uh it's semi-automatic this car so we've got um a position uh towards you and up when the clutch is in that's reverse and then in the away from you position when we go up it puts us into the first two low gears which you don't normally use so it's basically first and second but you don't use them they're very very low and and uh, if you were towing or going up a hill the down position is the two top gears now you normally drive the car in these gears they're third and fourth i guess you'd say and it shifts semi-automatically between um third and fourth you, when you pull away now, the car will pull away in third, and when you reach about 10, 12 miles an hour, you can lift the throttle slightly, and it will click itself automatically into fourth. When you come to a halt, it will automatically go back down into that lower third gear, um, so that because of the fluid drive, when you stop, you just put your foot from the throttle to the brake, and you can sit with your foot on the brake in gear. The car won't stall because it has a fluid drive. When you go to pull away, like an automatic, you just come from the brake to the throttle, pull away, then you ease off again slightly, it'll change up into top and you're driving as normal. So you're basically driving third and fourth, um, nudging it into fourth each time. It changes automatically down into third and you never have to use the clutch unless you, unless you particularly want to go into reverse or down into the very low gears or go into neutral, of course. Um, the ring around here is the normal for the year, which was the horn. And that is really all the controls you have. I mean, obviously you've got a throttle and a brake and a clutch and your um, dipstick, sorry, your, your dipping button for the, for the lights, which is on the floor. Uh, handbrake is, is what they call, well, an umbrella type it's called, which is down here on the left. And that's, that's how you control the car. As far as the buttons are concerned, uh, let's have a look. The first one on the left is the uh, amount of charge that the battery is receiving, in other words, what the generator is doing. Then we've got the um, fuel gauge, uh, how much uh, fuel we've got, obviously. Um, then we go over to the oil, and we have uh, the oil pressure gauge. And then we've got the uh, temperature gauge, which um, is the water pressure, uh, water temperature. Pretty normal stuff. Um, but, you know, for the year, I mean, nowadays, obviously, cars don't even have them. They, they just have red lights and orange lights and so on. Um, you've got a speedometer and a trip meter uh, and a mileometer. This... This uh, cluster of uh, instruments Chrysler used for many years. I think they started off in the Chrysler in 1949 and ran, well, at least up till 53, I know, because I had a 53 that I sold recently, a 53 Chrysler, and I had the same uh, cluster. So I think it ran from 49 to 53. I think in 54 they went on to a, um, um, a horizontal one, more horizontal rather than this round one. 
So as far as spares are concerned, I mean, I've got a spare spare one of these clusters, but you can buy them around. They were, they were in so many of their cars, quite uh, common. Down here as well, we've also got the um, release for the bonnet, because the bonnet had a, uh, it, a lock that you had to release from the inside, which is obviously in all modern cars. But in these days, in those days, I think it was, in many cars, it was optional, because you could open the bonnet release from outside without coming in the car, um, but now uh, they introduced this in, in cars as an option. Some cars had them as, as standard, which was a safety feature from obviously somebody thieving or getting inside your engine, I guess. Um, we've got, sorry, yeah, we've got the, still got the quarter lights, um, opening quarter lights, which really are effective. And there's not a lot left. That little prism affair here, which there again was very common in, 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 in these cars of the period, uh, allows you to see up above the traffic lights. Because in America, the lights, most of the traffic lights of the period were hung from wires above the road. So if you pulled up underneath them, especially if you had a sun visor, uh, you couldn't actually see the lights or you had to lean forward and look up. So this prism, um, you could sit back in your seat and it would allow you to see the lights when they change from red to green. Uh, a very common uh, ec uh, optional extra, uh, sorry, aftermarket extra in, in the uh, late 40s, early 50s. This car is, then is uh, very Art Deco. I've may already mentioned before this lovely window winder, which has got this spring-loaded and it swivels. It's really, really nice. Uh, nice little Art Deco touches everywhere. Generally speaking, really nice car. The padded dash, it's just, for the period, it's lovely. Very rakish looking, really. Um, that's about it, really. In the back, it's a lot of mess by the look, where my dog's been. Lovely headlining. I had to replace the headlining a few years ago because I actually got some mice in the car and they nested in it. So unfortunately, the original one got wrecked. But the new one is, 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 is virtually the same as the old one. Well, that's about it, I guess.